let people fake you out. Just because they walked around trying to look cool. Here's my point. If we want to live with hope in an unjust society, we need the knowledge of God. Living with the knowledge of God's ways during our seasons of affliction produces hope. Can I say that again? Because somebody needs to write that down. You can go ahead and back to sleep from there. But living with the knowledge of God's ways. You know, see, you know, one of the dangers about being in church for a long time is we think we know God. One of the dangers of being a preacher and sitting in this chair is if I'm not careful, I can think that I know God. I wish I could talk to somebody out here. But, but living with the knowledge of God's ways during our seasons of affliction produces hope. Which means that if you're not experiencing hope, you need to know some things about God. Oh, it got kind of quiet here this morning. The, the first thing we learn from our history is that our unjust society can cause us to question whether God really cares. Have you ever been there before, y'all? Has life ever pushed your back up against the wall of despair? And you begin to pray, Lord, don't you see what's going on in my life? Lord, don't you see what our enemies are doing to our people? But, but when we read our history correctly in this nation, our history reminds us that our God sees. And so the question is, what does God see when God looks at our contemporary situation? I'm, I'm talking about America in 2024. Well, if you have your Bible open, I want to just show you a couple verses that that may serve as a lens to help us see some things. But verse 34 says that God sees the crushed prisoners of the land. Is that in your Bible? In, in other words, people who are incarcerated, people in jail can still be the victims of injustice and violation. Come on now, y'all. It, it doesn't matter why a person goes to prison. They shouldn't be stripped of their voting rights if they're a citizen. They, they, they shouldn't be permanently banned from getting a job after doing their time or serving their sentence. God is not pleased when we as a nation kick those who are already down. Verse 35 says that God also sees the perversion of human rights. God, God sees when people have been cheated and denied their human dignity. Can I, can I give you an example? Take the 13th Amendment. The 13th Amendment abolished slavery and forced labor in this country. But that same 13th Amendment makes an exception for those who have been convicted of a crime. And so now... We have more African-American men in jail on probation or parole than folks who were slaves in 1850, which was before the Civil War even began. That's y'all sons and brothers. That's our 
our uncles. Yeah. That's our nephews. Yeah. African American men are only about 6% of the population, but we make up almost 50% of the prison population in this country. Why? Because in America, prisons are big business. We, we've got an ever-growing prison industrial complex because of racial inequalities in policing and sentencing. Therefore, the mass incarceration of Americans is an extension of the very slavery that we were supposed to be freed from. That's what the Bible calls an unjust society. I know y'all don't like this preaching. Look, look at verse 36. God sees that people have been denied fair hearings and trials. Can, can I talk about the death penalty for a second? It's okay to talk about this in church. Right? God is aware of all of the constitutional questions that the death row cases are raising. God, God is aware of the first, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the eighth, and the fourteenth amendment rights that have been violated while trying many of these death row cases. God knows when the sentence doesn't fit the crime. God knows when the punishment is disproportionate to the act that's committed. God sees, somebody say God sees. God, God sees how many innocent, how many innocent death row inmates have been exonerated after years in prison because of DNA testing. Seventy-five percent of conviction that were eventually overturned by DNA evidence were in cases where the eyewitness, quote unquote, misidentified the defendant. God sees the racial profiling. And, and you know, some of our family members have been trying to tell us this, but we too spiritual to listen. Because they don't dress like we think they should dress. Because they don't listen to the kind of music like we listen to. God sees that the death penalty is not being administered justly. God sees, y'all. But the question is, do we see what God sees? Because when we begin to see what God sees, we understand that the Lord does not approve of this mess. Are y'all with me this morning? Now, if God sees these injustices and still allows us to go through them stay with me now I said if God sees it and still allows us to go through it it, it might suggest that God must have a purpose for this suffering please, please understand God doesn't approve of the injustice. But since he's the Lord of history. God can use our suffering for his purposes. And, and God's purposes are ultimately for God's glory and for our good. Now. I, I can tell by the spirit in the house this morning that 
I'm not going to have many people who want to be honest this morning. But for the church around the corner, <laughs> there's some people who go to that church who used to be real hard-headed. Yeah. Not, not, not none of us. Some of them were hard-headed. So some of them thought they were better than everybody else. So some of them were atheists and agnostics until. Somebody say until. Until. Until they went to prison. Until they went to rehab. Until that person broke their heart. Until their parents put them out the house and they were homeless. Until they experienced racism on the job. Until their spouse died. Until they became a single parent. Until they were unjustly fired from their job. Until they got sick. Until that, that near death experience. Does anybody here have an until testimony this morning? You see, you see, when your testimony begins with until, somebody say until. When, when your testimony begins with until, it means that you have discovered that suffering was the path God used to bring you back to him. I wish I could talk to the church this morning. And, and, and while you were on that path, you learned that suffering does not have the last word. Suffering. Don't have the last word, Sister Pryor. When God is your hope. You see, when, when God, oh God, I ain't talking about your boyfriend. I ain't talking about your job. I'm not talking about hitting the number. I'm not talking about your case money. I said, when God is your hope. When God is your hope, y'all, God, hear me, y'all, God can limit and in some cases will reverse the consequences of your bad behavior. I say when God is your hope, God can limit and in some cases reverse the consequences of your behavior. Somebody say reverse. Nicole, hope in the Lord. Somebody say reverse. There's somebody listening to me right now who feels cursed. You, you feel like life is kicking your gluteus maximum. Well, I just want to remind you that the God of our foreparents, the God of our weary years, and the God of our silent tears is willing to allow suffering in your life if that's what it will take to turn our hearts back to God. I said God will allow it if that's what it will take to turn. Yes, yes. Why? Because when you turn back to God, anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? Hey, anybody ever backslid before? Oh, I'm sorry, that's the church around the corner. When you turn your back to God, When you turn back 
to God. You won't feel cursed, but you will be blessed. Tell somebody, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed when I get up in the morning. I'm blessed when I come back home and lay down. I'm blessed when I go out. And I'm blessed when I come back. I'm blessed when I'm in the, when I'm in the city. But I'm blessed when I'm also in the country. I'm blessed in Philadelphia. But if I move to Pakistan, I'll still be blessed. Tell somebody, I'm blessed. And ain't nothing you can do. <laughs> African American history reminds us that our God sees the injustices we experience in this world. And, and when we begin to see what God sees, we will know that our God hates injustice. But, but we also learn that God often allows suffering to turn God's people back to him. The, the final thing we learn from our history about living with hope in an unjust society is that God will give his people Words of comfort. In a society that talks dirty about you. A society with racial epithets. A society that's mean and, and will say all kinds of stuff to hurt your feelings. God gives his people words of comfort. Aren't you glad that when our hearts are overwhelmed, anybody know what it means for your heart to be overwhelmed? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you don't, you just keep on living. Because when our hearts are overwhelmed, we can pour out our complaint to the Lord. It, it's called a lamentation, y'all. It is the prayer of the afflicted. Come on now. Our foreparents taught us to pray this way. Re Reverend Covington led us in prayer this way. Father, I stretch. Oh, I, I, this generation don't even know about these type of prayers. Anyway. Father, I stretch. My hands to thee. No other help. I know. If, if thou. Withdraw thyself from me. Where. Will I go. Our, our, our four parents. Used to sing. Have a little talk. With Jesus. Tell. Him all about your trouble. He'll, he'll hear your faintest cry and he will feel a little prayer wheel turning. No, a little fire is burning. But if you just have a little talk with. Anybody here still believe in Jesus? Have a little talk with Jesus and he'll make it right. And, and because our ancestors prayed, some of us too smart to pray. Some of us too arrogant to pray. Let 
lamentation to God and not the girlfriend at the hair salon. Because they took the lamentation to God, they began to take their eyes off of themselves. They stopped looking at what they were going through. And by faith, somebody say by faith. By faith, they looked to the Lord. I, I'm in the text, y'all. I'm in the text. Look at verse 21. Verse 21 says, when they looked to the Lord, by faith they declared, despite what they were going through, despite their troubles, yet I call this to mind, and therefore I have. I feel it this morning. I, I don't know who I'm preaching to. But the reason I live with hope and the reason why you should live with hope is because of the mercies of God. That we live with hope because of the mercies of God. Not mercy, but mercy. It, it's because of the mercies of God that we are not consumed. It's because of the mercies of God that we did not perish. It, it's because of the mercies of God that we did not die in our sins. The Bible says, Brother Deacons, his compassion never fails. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That's why the psalmist says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy Endures. You see, it's because of God's mercies that you and I don't get what we really deserve. It's because of God's mercies that we can be forgiven when we repent. It's because of God's mercies that we can be restored to a right relationship with God. And so, the word of comfort for somebody here this morning. The word of comfort is that God's mercies are new. Every morning. I say God's mercies are new. Every morning. Which means that each morning is the dawning of a new day. And so it doesn't matter how many times you messed up yesterday. God's mercies are new. You see, the devil is, is driving some of us out of our mind. Because we don't know that God's mercies are every.
when trouble arises. And I know we, we real deep now. We don't have trouble anymore. Until we get back to the crib. We, we project it out here. But when trouble arises, we need to learn to cry out. Not, not whisper. We need to learn to cry out. Like our ancestors. Lord, have mercy. Somebody say, Lord, have mercy. See, young people, I, I know y'all think we crazy and just make a lot of noise. But a cry for mercy, young people, will cause God to dispatch angels on your behalf. A cry for mercy. Come on, somebody needs to know what I'm saying. A cry for mercy will move God to give you another chance to get it right when you mess up. You just need to learn to say, Lord! I know folks are going to look at you crazy. But your grandma didn't care. Lord! Have mercy. Somebody wants the service to go on. You're looking at your watch because it's dang near. Come on. Lord! And, and see, the reason why she was doing that because she was praying for us when we was in the dice game around the corner. you're educated. Education is a wonderful thing. But education is not salvation. There'll be some educated fools in hell. But our foreparents, we just talked about it this morning. Some of them couldn't even read. They know how to say, Lord. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And Corinthians, the comfort is in knowing that God hears you when you call. And he will catch you when you fall. He'll pick you up. Turn you around. And place your feet. The songwriter said it this way. Great is my faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed. Here it is. Thy hand. I wish my boy, Pastor Good, was here this week to sing again. I would say, Thou, my everlasting portion, more than friends or life to me, all along this pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with thee. Close to thee. Close to thee. Oh, master. Let me walk with all along. This pilgrim journey. Savior, let me walk with thee. If you're going to live with hope in an unjust society, 
We just read it in verse 24. We must confess as you stand on your feet. The Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will put my hope in him. Church ought to say amen. amen. There may be someone here this morning. Who does not know about this hope that is available to us. Well, to be a recipient of that hope, you first must experience the mercy of God. And the good news is that the Bible says that our God is rich in mercy. Which means that he ain't just got a little bit of mercy. You know how some of us are. You know. But God, God pours out his mercy lavishly. That, that's why we shout sometimes because his mercy is overwhelming. God is much better to us than we've been to him. In fact, as bad as we have been to him, it makes no sense how good he is to us. God who is rich in mercy, because of his great love for us, he made us alive in Christ. Even though we were dead in our trespasses and sin. You're saved by grace. You're saved by grace through faith. And that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Thank you. Not of works. So that no one can boast. Someone needs to say yes to Jesus today. Is there one? Please, Lord. Help me to hold out. Hope will help you hold out. Until my change. Second call, you you may already be a Christian. But you find yourself without a church home right now. You need to be connected to a community of hope. So that we can grow together. And learn about the ways of God. Someone who can pray for you and hold you accountable. Love you. Encourage you. Challenge you when you're wrong. But love you enough to stay there with you till you get right. The doors of the church are open to you. Is there one? Come on, let's sing that verse one more time before we go to the benediction. Lord, come on, let's put our hands together. Help me to hold out. Please, Lord. Before we go to the Lord for his blessings and benediction, I just want to remind us that in Christ we have hope. We can live with hope. 
We can live with a confident expectation that what God says will happen will happen. What God has promised will come to pass. I don't care what your situation looks like. God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. If he has said it, he'll do it. And if he has spoken it, it will come to pass. Let us bow our heads. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The love of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rests, rule, and abide in our hearts, both now and forevermore. Let us all say together. Amen. 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 Go in peace, my brothers and sisters. I'm here for the Pandora's bracelet if you need it. <laughs>